Welcome to the Dane and Josh Show, brought to you by Milk for Health. I'm Josh, he's Dane, and we're here for another podcast. You know, before we get started, make sure that you guys are subscribing on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you guys get your podcasts. Uh, we've got a lot of cool content coming up and uh, a few more podcasts to go. Today, we have a special guest, Rob Ray. A lot of good stories about him and uh, stay tuned. Thanks for coming, man. No problem, guys. Appreciate you I'll having me. I come here to learn something. <laughs> <laughs> that's new. That's new. Feed me. Yeah. <laughs> How are things with you? Everything's great. Uh, you know, season winding down and that. Uh, busy time, but uh, it's it's a fun time. Fun time. Awesome. Love that's that. good. I have a quick question off the script is, uh, how are you with flying? Because my buddy over here is not that great. And obviously you, you, you mentioned a lot of travel, so um, that must be uh, pretty tough. I'll tell you, what, you know when the worst time is, is, is this time of year, in the springtime, once the thunderstorms and that start? Mm -hmm. Because oh, it yeah. creates all those air pockets and that, and you'll be going and you're bouncing a lot. <laughs> and there's nights when you're going and all of a sudden you just feel the plane hovering and you think you're going and all of a sudden it hits the bottom of one of those air pockets and you just it's like you hit the ground ground and it's like oh my god and it's like the last 20 or 30 minutes going into a place and it's why am I why do I do this job I'll never see my family again type yeah. thing but most of the time it's really good but I've had some guys over the year you know I remember Alexander McGillney refused to fly and they he took a limo to St. Louis uh, early in his career and that kind of made him like to fly after a while John Tortorello <laughs> was terrible I remember Rick Dudley one night on the planes we used to fly those prop jobbies that sat kind of on an angle like you see on major league and that and Duds was so scared, he, he always sat at the back of the plane, and it was a bumpy ride, and things are going crazy, and he ripped the back seat right out of the plane, he was so nervous, and it's just like, we hear this bang back there, and it's like him ripping the seat out. <laughs> I remember one night coming home from Boston, and we hit an air pocket that you, you just, it hit so hard, all the, the uh, masks and everything popped out, and they're all hanging there, and I remember God. Rick Vibe crying on the plane, going, I'm never going to see my family again, I'm never going to, and we're like, oh my God, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, there's some nights that man, you just... Man, I hate There's so many. Like, I'm coming yeah. in from Niagara one night, and and you're landing, and you're about 10 feet off the ground, and there's a snow plow, and they pull up and take off, and you've got to come around again. You almost, yeah. It's just so many things all the time. Yeah. I but, hate it. I hate it. I, I don't know who's ever, whose ever idea it was to take, you know, 50, 60 people and put them in a metal container and fly it halfway across the world is just... I don't like that guy. We, wait, we wait until you got to do it with battery operated planes. No. Uh -uh. See how you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Even like, I mean, you say the, the, the prop planes. Oh, yeah. That I was, can't imagine. Yeah, but when I first started playing, we'd fly commercial. So it didn't matter where you played. You never played back to back, you know, that you, that, so you'd always spend the night and fly yeah. home the next day commercial. Yeah. And that was just as bad because the guys were out all night and then you'd have practice <laughs> yeah, yeah. as soon as you got in when you got home. And then, so when we went to those prop jobbies, I think it was Air Niagara or something, and it was like, you, you were like, ooh, this is big time. Here we go. But, yeah. you know, you didn't mind. It was so cold on there. You couldn't take your coat off. You'd freeze to death on the plane. But at <laughs> least you were coming home that night and, you know, you weren't waiting around. Yeah. That's... Well, yeah, very, very crazy because, you know, I, I go, I hate it. I have to, like, take meds and stuff to just get through it, man. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Do you ever think about retiring? Uh, yes. Yeah. Multiple times yeah. because of His it. thought process going in is, like, this could go down. I'm like, you can't think like that, first of all. And second of all, like, it. You're, if it if it does, it's your time to go. But he'll be taking sleeping pills from like prescribed, and he'll stay up. And I'm like, how are you staying yeah. up? And then he'll we'll, we'll land, <laughs> and, I'll be and he'll be like so done. tired. Can't I'm get like, him out the plane. <laughs> Georgie Babcock, our trainer, is terrible flying, and he sits right behind me. And as soon as the first little little hint of something not being oh, yeah. clean, he starts pounding on the wall and and kicking the seat and screaming. And yelling at the captain, it's like, Georgie, shut the up. <laughs> yeah. like, you're making everybody else nervous here. Just yeah. calm down. Yeah, yeah. So. When, uh, when, you, when you were playing junior, did, did you guys travel a lot yeah. in, in the juniors as well? And was it, was it flights or was it more like buses? No, you, you bust everywhere. It was okay. the same as the minors. I think even in the minors, uh, you would fly to the East Coast, uh, you know, because Halifax, Cape Breton, and those teams that were out there, 
Uh, you'd fly out, hit two or three of those teams, and come home, and it would be one time a year. Yeah. Uh, sometimes in the playoffs, you, you may fly to where you had to go, but it was all bus. Same with junior. You know, you get on and 15-hour track from Cornwall to Sault Ste. Marie or Windsor or something yeah. like that. and But it was just, it was, it was A, it was fun. Yeah. It was a good time. With the boys. Because we're all young kids then, and, it, and who really cared? Yeah. You yeah. know, not now. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. last year we had to bus to uh, Columbus for an exhibition game. It was like four or five hours, whatever it is. And it was the worst experience of my life. And I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? You're right. You know, I remember going back to, to Binghamton when I got, went back to Ottawa the second time. And I had to go from Binghamton to Springfield. And about an hour outside of town, the bus breaks down. You sat there till six in the morning to another bus came and picked you up and took you. And we had a noon game that day. Like just stuff like that happens too much. Yeah. No, Driving down the road, the bus driver yells, hang on. He hits a deer. <laughs> he doesn't even take his foot off the accelerator, hits a deer and just keeps going. You get to where you're going, you're peering deer parts off the front of the bus. Well, you got so, you, you got to speed up. At least he give you the you warning. Hang on. Deer, right? Here it comes. Um, what, uh, what was your game like the start of your career? Were you like always a fighter or did no. you just like, you are a goal scorer probably, right? No, when I played oh. junior, uh, I think my last year junior, I had 50 some points. Uh, you know, but back then it was a different game. Everybody yeah. got involved physically. Everybody, you know, fought. You had to fight to survive. It didn't yeah. matter if you were a star player or a fourth line guy. You, everybody did it. Um, but it wasn't, you weren't, I wasn't good at it then. You did it because you had to to survive. Um, more defensive player, you know, chipped in offensively here and there. But when I got drafted here and I went to Roch after that camp, John Van Boxmeer said, hey, this is what they're looking for in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to do it? And I'm like 19 at the time, and I'm like, hell yeah, show me how to do it. And probably the worst guy to show me how to do it, John Van Boxmeer was never a fight in his life. And, <laughs> and you know, but, it, but he encouraged you to do it and maybe taught you a little bit on when to and when not to. And that year I had, what, 46 fighting majors, 440-some minutes of penalties. And, but you year? learn how to do it. So you're 19, 20 years old fighting men that were 35 that had – Wives and kids and surviving, and that was their, you know, thing. Yeah. Um, so you had to learn quick. And what did so, your parents think about that? Uh, my dad still never, he still can't get over that I actually got paid to play hockey. <laughs> I remember my first contract in Roch, and I called him up, and I go, I signed a contract. And he goes, how much was it? And I go, I have no idea. I, all I did was sign it because he said I had to sign it to play. And uh, I don't even know, it was like 25 grand or something. And he just, you know, my dad, hardworking guy back home, and he just, you just see him just stand there and shake his head, and he's going, I can't believe this. Is, what is this world coming to? <laughs> yeah, you know, so, no, nah, they, they were cool with it. You know, yeah. uh, it, it was something that, I, it was a decision I made. Yep. I, thank God I did. Thank God I got the advice. But, you know, after a while, they just, I don't know if they ever got used to it. Right. But my dad, my dad was always there. But he, after the game, he was the guy that would come up to you, how'd you make out? And I'm like, what do you mean how'd I make out? You were just at the game. Why? <laughs> yeah. I got talking, right, you know yeah. what I wasn't. So, you know, he didn't he never put the pressure on you or anything like that. So he, he didn't pay that close attention. I can remember hitting my two thousand penalty minute and he calls me up and he goes, Hey, congratulations on your two thousand point. I go, What? <laughs> I go, Gretzky doesn't have two thousand points, Dad. And he goes, oh, I thought the guys at the coffee shop said you hit 2,000 points last night. I go, it was penalty minutes. He's like, oh, is that good? I go, I don't know. Oh, it's good. That's who you ask, I guess. So. But that, that part of it was great. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, there was a rule created after that. Yeah. Right? The Rob, the Rob Ray rule. So, I mean, obviously, tell us a little bit about that. We, we know we watched a couple fights, too, and um, obviously, you know, get your jersey out of there and and just go to town what was that like a strategy that that you would thought of you know beforehand or it just kind of start well, happening it, in the 90s it was it was a kind of a battle to see who could come up with the next thing like yeah. at that era there was a lot of fighting yes so spring silicone that you couldn't hang on mm. guys had velcro in their shirts so you grab onto the arm Pull out. the velcro would tear and your arm was loose and you tried a million different things um, one night the jersey came off, and I and I was like, hey, no, this is pretty good. Yeah. And Jim Pizzatelli, who used to be our trainer, you know, we called him the fight doctor because he put more effort into it than he'd always have ideas. <laughs> but, and then once it came off, it was like, okay, so let's not tie down. And then over time, it was like I never tied my shoulder pads down. I just yeah. had them kind of stuck inside my shirt and no straps, and the elbow pads were just held on by the jersey. So it was like, as soon as you the guy grabbed onto you and give a tug and I wore a goalie sized jersey all the time, right? So 
um, it just came on. It just like <laughs> literally fell off. And you, there's so many nights you, you'd see the guy grab on, he thinks he's got you, and he gives you a tug, and all of a sudden he's standing there with a jersey. And he's like, <laughs> and, because then he's screwed because right. he's got nothing to hang yeah, on to. Right. And, then, and with us, it's all balance, so balance and leverage. So uh, it was just kind of something we stumbled on and then kind of perfected it from there. But as far as the rule, it was just a lot of – GM's complaining that uh, <laughs> you know you we were Guys are getting their teeth I was getting in. that and their guy wasn't so it was uh, people ask you know did, is it cool that it yeah I guess it is but it, you know it's unfortunate that you know they had to do something like that <laughs> yeah. on the other hand it was you know kind of cool that maybe you made such an impact that you know this had to happen right. so big time I know I'm kind of torn between but when you're coaching young kids 14 year old boys and they want to fight and you're like telling them not to and they're like yeah but coach yeah but coach you know it's like okay I'm screwed now <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's incredible um yeah that's because we had a guy um this guy Rory Smith um just very very tough but he would do something similar, but he had a clip because we had obviously rib pads, shoulder pads, a lot more pads. And so he would, before he would get into the fight, he'd, he'd clip something and same thing. It, it would almost just like melt off of it, yeah. right? And I remember being back in, in New West and watching him literally drag someone pretty much, pretty much shirtless and just feeding them and looking at the bench and be like, you want some of this? But uh he, uh, he had to stop fighting. Well, it, for me, it went from not being able to take it off. And the first couple of fights, I can remember the first fight in the exhibition, it was against Domi. And he lifted the front of my jersey up. Yeah. And it got it over my head. And I'm like looking at him out through my arm <laughs> uh, because, you know, you could see a little bit through the jersey and still going. But my head was caught in my arm. And, and after that, it was like, I gotta, we got to figure this out. And Georgie Babcock and I figured out that, okay, you had to tie down at the back. So you put it tight at the back and also put a snap on the front. Yeah. So it hooked to your pants on the front. Yeah. So they couldn't lift up the front, couldn't yeah. pull the back over. So you went from taking everything off to locking it down as tight as you possibly could. Yeah. But by that time, it didn't matter because you were more comfortable doing it. Yeah. And you weren't going into fights, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you were the older guy that they were coming after, you know. So yeah. uh, it was it was a little different then. But, yeah, it went from one extreme to another. Big time. Who, yeah. uh, I mean, you mentioned Domi. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know the history that that you guys have had. Um, who do you think would be the toughest guy that you fought and why? Um, I don't know if there was one guy cause, because the guys were so different mm -hmm. uh, when they fought. Like the older guys, when you first started it, they were like marathon fights. You were going a couple minutes and you had to be ready for it. Like McSorley's and Jay Miller's and guys like that. Um, and then you got into the guys that were a lot of power, like Joe Kosher uh tony twist tony twist hit me so hard here one night pressure pushed my eyeball through an orbital bone the whole side of my face filled up full of air for nine days wow and it was like you know it was this and that's what he was he was yeah. just so massive so so all different styles some guys want to hang on and grapple and punch when they could and some guys would stand back and just let it mm -hmm. go uh joe kosher hit the hardest out of anybody i ever fought yeah and it was like if he hit you in the eye, your eye was swollen shut before his hand came off your face. So that's <laughs> oh how hard he did you. That's crazy. But, it, yeah, it's so many different styles and so many different guys. And you just watch. As you got older, the younger guys coming in, it was always that short, quick burst. Yeah. And then they were done. Yeah. And so you, a lot of times you just held on just and waiting. took a couple just because you knew they would be done in right. a, a matter of 30 seconds. And then you could go at them. Yeah. And, uh so just different styles, I think that. But there was a lot of tough guys like Bob Probert back then, and uh, you know there was J Jim Kite. There was so many guys. Every team had a couple guys, and training camp was the worst in an exhibition because oh, all man. those guys were out there, Trying and they all wanted a yeah. shot. They all wanted mm -hmm. a shot, yeah. and it was like, oh my god, here we go. <laughs> so it was like, well, but it was good. Was I your, did the same thing, so you right. had to respect it, exactly. and you know, kind of help them out along the way too. What was your uh, first wow moment in the NHL? Uh, wow like, moment yeah like, 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 i'm here i'm here like oh i'm playing in that age. Like, well i was fortunate my my first game I, we played the night before in roch boxy called me in said i was called up i told him he was full of crap you know and he's a little <laughs> serious i go yeah whatever and finally when he convinced me that i actually got called up we were playing in pittsburgh the next night flew in there that morning and went to the morning skate and it was like oh my god you know you were you were there and you didn't know and you know back to the hotel and Dougie Bodger was my roommate and he's like well let's go for lunch 
I'm like, where do we go? They have it set up. I'm like, you guys have this set up? You get free meals? You get free food with this place too? And and that night, I can remember in, in the stadium in the old igloo in Pittsburgh, and you're like looking around. You look down, and, and Mary, um, Mary Lemieux and, and guys like that on the other team, and you're like, whoa, this is, this is really happening. And I never got a shift for the first probably five minutes of the game. And on my first shift, I, I scored on my first shift for a shot, and I'm like, Phew. Easy game. <laughs> why haven't I? Why didn't you bring me here sooner? <laughs> and uh, I and I had a goal and assist plus three that night. And statistically wise, it was the best game I ever had in the NHL. It was my first one. So, that's and crazy. you know what? This and that's that's what it was all about, right? Then, if you had a, if I had a sent back to Rochester and never played again, it was like I did it. You yeah. know, this was kind of it. Right. And uh, you know, the next couple of days later, you're playing at home against the Bruins, and you know the Bruins and Sabers at that time were huge rivals. Uh, Got in a fight, my first fight, Nevin Markworth in, in, against him in, in Buffalo, and it was kind of kind of rolling from there. Yeah, that's what a what a moment to start. That's that's awesome. I, I actually scored on my first shift and my last shift in the NHL. That, that's one that's way. Impressive. To, yeah, that's one way you to go. go. You should go in the Hall of Fame. I know. I, I know. <laughs> I, I was in Ottawa when I scored my last one. I go back to the bench, and Jacques Martin hated me. And I come back, and everybody's all happy and excited. And I sat there the rest of the night, never got another shift. He never dressed me another game. And it was like two games left in the – or it was the last game of the season. It meant nothing for Ottawa. And he always called you in. And I go – and guys were so intimidated by him. And I didn't care at that time because he had already called me in the office the day I got there. And he says, hey, you're not here because I wanted you here. You're here because John Muckler wanted you here. And I'm like, okay, I know where I stand. So that night, that morning at the morning skate, I'm like in front of all the guys. I'm like, watch this night's – Shane Knighty with him and I were good friends. And I uh, go, hey, Jacques. And he's, yeah, yes, Rob Ray. I said, I swear to God, if you play me tonight, I promise not to score. And he kind of looked at me, and all the guys were like, and then they started to laugh, and he got mad and threw us all off the ice. <laughs> and that was the end of it. So I knew I was done then. Yeah. What a way. All right, well, yeah. we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Before we get into our second segment about Rob Ray's career, uh, we're going to get into one of our sponsors, uh, Finish Your Milk. We have a few rapid questions. You want to start us off? Yeah. Um, okay. You know, first of all, like I said before, I'm pretty fired up. You know, the boys got a, got a sponsor. It's, it's pretty good chocolate milk. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't like that you're staring at me while you're drinking. Yeah, wow. yeah. Especially yeah. When yeah. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? Put yes, your it does. tongue underneath it when you did it. <laughs> like... um, yeah, you know what? I'll start it off. It's... Uh, Called Finish Your Milk, like you said. Um, regular milk or chocolate milk for you? Chocolate. All day? All day. I grew up at home, had skim milk. You guys ever had skim milk? It's like yeah. water yeah. that's yeah. white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. Okay. Never yeah. again will I touch that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm the same way. I, I, I honestly... I got to have some meat to it. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't even do regular milk back then. Chocolate so milk. chocolate milk is... Chocolate milk and protein. Doritos are my... If I was going to the electric chair... That's my meal. Doritos. Yep. Ooh, I wish we had some. Yeah. Regular cheese Doritos, not the <laughs> yeah. ranch ones or all that. No, no stuff. fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Um, all right, you're pouring milk uh, on cereal. What is that cereal? Probably Raisin Bran. Really? Raisin Bran. That's a curveball. It might be cereal killer. Yeah, there. I don't Why? know if I trust you. I don't know. <laughs> like raisins in, in general, people that eat raisins aren't like. What? They're not what? <laughs> They're the smartest human who's ever yeah, yeah, that's smart. There you go. Out of boy. No, um, I'm older, guys. Like, yeah. I'm not young like you guys. Can't eat the sugar stuff no, anymore. Um, would you ever put chocolate milk on it? If that's all that was there. Yeah, okay. All right. That's fair. Um, I guess. All right. And our last question. Milk goes best with what? I just said chocolate milk goes best with Doritos. <laughs> that's that's. Your... Oh, you don't even know. Really? Like, I get on the plane now, and it's like, grab the Doritos or the ketchup chips. Oh. Because we use the the plane company out of Canada, so they always have ketchup and dill pickle chips on the plane. Well, you're in luck because hammer today them and and beat them up. We're able to bring you some Doritos. Oh, see that? Chocolate milk. <laughs> so I can stay here the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, you're happy. Yeah. All right. You're like a little kid on Christmas. Well, open the them right up. Kind too. Open them up. They're they're the right ones. Good. Those ranch ones, just not the same. So you're telling me you got in a plane and you're like, I need my chocolate milk and Doritos. They're already sitting there. <laughs> wow. Must be nice. Oh, you guys there. don't get that? No, no, no you don't get it. a little different. You don't get choices like three hot meals either? <laughs> no, you don't? 
That's too bad. No, we're still flying commercial. It's yeah, okay. we're sitting in the hallway while the same. You guys should win more here. often then. Yeah, 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 you're not wrong. We're going to win more games. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I mean, j- jump in. We're gonna switch switch a little bit up here. Um, what? Your broadcasting career, right? Uh-huh. I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, what was it like working and you know learning uh, from a legend like RJ? I'll tell you what. When I was a player, you and did something on the ice. It was like you couldn't wait to get in the room and have the VHS tape because that, most of the time that's all it was or they used VHS, to have that hockey right? hotline afterwards to see, uh, you know, a highlight, whether it was a fight or a goal or something. Just because the way he explained it, the enthusiasm, the whatever words he used, uh, it was always something, you know, creative that it was like guys would be like, I got to go listen to what RJ said. Right. Mm-hmm. And that, I think that's, that's incredible. When I started working with them, I was like the third guy then. So it was Harry Neal and him doing the games, and I was kind of the third wheel in between the benches and that. And I was always so nervous of what I said because he wouldn't hold back. If you said something that he (laughs) didn't think you should, as soon as that commercial came, you just sat there and go, oh, my God, he's going to kill me. (laughs) All of a sudden, you'd hear him in your, why would you say that? You don't say that. This is what – and it was like – but it was great because he was such a perfectionist of what he did. Like if you if you watch play by play guys and collar guys around the league, they do so much homework. They're sitting there and they got papers and papers and papers and stuff in front of them. He never had that. He had a, the lineup. Yeah. He just the lineup. And you said it. I go. How do you say this name? He goes. Do it the same way I do. And so whenever he would pronounce a name, you'd have to pronounce it the same way, just yeah. so you weren't going against. Him. But he just over time he just. Uh, Taught you so many little things, and, and, and I was scared to death at the beginning, and then by the end, you know, you were comfortable doing it, and then, he's, then he, he kind of let you know that he appreciated it. You know, he said to me at one point, he said he would keep working if I worked with him, and I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. And, but he told me he was only going to work a couple more years, and then he was going to retire, and it was like, you know, 12 years later, he's still working, and, and you know, you're still stuck doing the job <laughs> yeah. type thing. So by that time, it was too late. But, just little things, you know, letting the game breathe. And if the game's not so good, take it in another direction for a few minutes and talk about whatever. So him and I always had banter back and forth about whatever we did, places we went or people or something, just to kind of distract people for a couple of minutes and then go back to the game. And he always felt that was kind of got them away from it, you know, distracted them a little bit. And then you go back to the situation if it wasn't good on the ice type thing. So, but just the greatest guy we'd sit i'm telling you every dive bar in every town (laughs) you know it was never somewhere nice it was always the bowling alley in philly you know little scum places and he'd sit there all day and and sometimes not hardly say a word other than you want another beer gonna eat you know and and but had conversations about life more than anything yeah you know not the game or anything like that so i learned an awful lot from him you know as a human yeah and how to be a father, how to be a husband, how to, you know, deal with a lot of different situations just from him. So yeah, that's it huge. was pretty cool. That's huge. You know, people like yeah. that are always awesome to have in your life and obviously yeah. to kind of show you the next, uh, the next steps. And willing to do it. Yeah. You know, it's huge. Being, being tough enough that you would pay attention yeah. and learn from it and then patting you on the back enough to, okay, mm-hmm. I got it type yeah. thing and make it yeah. comfortable enough to do it. That's, that's the definition of a vet right there. Yeah. Um, did you always want to be a broadcaster when you were no. done, or with that? never, never, ever, 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 off? ever, ever thought about it? And you know, like I said, Larry Quinn called me the day before the season was starting. What in 2005 or whatever? No, it was 2004 because I wasn't going to play that year. And I did the broadcast partway through the year, and then I went at the trade deadline. I went back to they allowed me to go back to Ottawa and finish the year. <laughs> That's crazy. And so I left the booth, and I hadn't skated in nine months, and it was great because we were, on a, chirp you? we were on a break. No, we were on a break, and my wife and I were in Nassau, and we're on the beach. And all of a sudden, the phone rings, and it was like John Markle, and he's like, hey, what's up? I go, what's up, Mark? He's like, what kind of shape are you in? And I'm like, fat. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in great shape. And he goes, I need you here tomorrow. And I go, can you give me a couple days to get there? And I, we literally had to go that day, get a flight back, and, and get out of there and get home. I skated once in uh, at the Pepsi Center before I went up. And then the next morning, I skated with the, the Sens. 
And then he sent me to the Binghamton right after practice. He says, yeah, you're ready to go. And I'm like, okay, they were playing that night. He goes, no, it, in Binghamton against whoever. And so literally on a bus back down there, and within 48 hours of sitting on the beach in Nassau, I was playing my first game in the, in the American League again, uh, going at it. But it was great. But when he said, Quinny said, do you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. And never knew anything about it. I did it with Danny Gare for a year just in the dress room. And Danny taught me a lot and, and helped you out in that way. And, and then it just kind of from there to the desk with Roby and Kevin Sylvester. And then when Harry was winding it down, kind of moved into the third spot with them and, and then into the color because, you know, RJ kind of forced me or suggested that I do it. And, but no, never and, and never even to this day really comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just it's such a cool job that you're still around the game. Yeah. And, you know, you're at every game, you're a part of every game but I don't have to be in shape anymore. I don't get yelled at anymore. I don't, you know, it's nothing about it that of the negative side of it that, so you're still there. So, you know, I, I think with our guys, a lot of the times when they're done with the game, they have such a hard time coming back to the building sometime or being involved because they feel they're not maybe welcomed or people look at them going, why are you here? You know, right, type right. thing. So for me, it was great. It was a, it was a door opener to, to come in and, and you know, keep working and being around the team. So I'm very grateful. But no, never thought of it. You uh, you mentioned being between the benches, and uh, when you started your career, and even even to this day. And uh, I know Josh and I have seen the video, and I'm sure it went viral. You catching a puck to uh, the forehead. Uh, how'd that feel? And what were your thoughts behind everything? Well, I was in an argument with the guy in the truck. Okay, <laughs> and he's like, "Write this down." He's like. There's five minutes left. I'm not going to use it. What do I need it for? Write it down. So here I am writing it down, and then all of a sudden, bang. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And at the second, I, I didn't know, and I put my hand up. There was a little blood, and then there was a ton of blood. And I'm trying to <laughs> got, get it on my suit. I had new white shoes on. I'm like, I got to get it off that. And then Stincy comes off the trainer. He's like, hey, you got to go get stitched up. I'm like, I can't leave. I, I can't. <laughs> even if I could have had an eight-inch gash, I couldn't leave. So I'm like, just close it up. So he put something in there that kind of pulled it together and, and stopped the bleeding, and, you know, you finish the game. And But, you know, it was a point where, no. Nah, but it was almost like instantly when it happened, you never far, felt – so part of a game again yeah. as you were like a player. And it was like, <laughs> I'm, down, I'm ready. I'm not, let's go. Yeah. You know, and it was like, Give me a it was kind of like the old days. Let's, let's go again, you know? And it was like that kind of adrenaline rush you got right there. And it was, I feel alive again. It, it sucked to get cut, but it was cool to get that feeling one last time. <laughs> yeah. Just to no. kind of go off that. Sorry. I have a quick question. Um, do you ever like find yourself like chirping players or anything like that in between the benches? No, no, no because you know what? It doesn't happen very often anymore okay. There's not as much years ago on. when steve ott left our team that yeah. was the last good chirper <laughs> and 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 since then very little is said amongst the guys okay. very little and and you know in the first few years it was it was awesome because you heard everything and there was no limits yeah, there yeah. was like yeah. you heard so much and a lot of nights you were kind of trying to cover up your mic too because you knew there was stuff that shouldn't Probably be going out over the air yeah. so you're trying to <laughs> but and then there's other times uh uh, well, there was one this year with with Austin Watson. I think it was this year or last year with Jeff Skinner when he and he leaned he leaned over and said something to Skinner and and he looks at me and goes like this. So I I lean in just so to catch it and he said something to Skinner and it was whatever it was cool. <laughs> yeah. um, but it doesn't happen very often. Okay. And you know there, you find yourself standing there at nights thinking you could still play sometimes and then you know the longer you think about it you go wow no, no, I'm yeah. kidding myself. You know, <laughs> yeah. think so. But no, it's 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 that's that part of the game has changed a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. very quiet out there now. Yeah, which is crazy. They're all friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean I guess we have a lot of buddies in the team. Um, you know, growing up for me, uh, I used to go to Vancouver games all the time and uh, you know, you'd hear some stuff kinda like over the glass and whatnot. But you know, I always grew up being a, a Canucks fan. Um, where I know you grew You've been up, pretty disappointed over the years too. Yeah, right? it's been a it's listen when yeah. when they when they you know lost the the cup to Boston, it was a it was a tough tough day. Was it at the Rangers? No, uh, that would have been uh, it was in Vancouver and lost in Game Seven. Oh, really? To Boston, 2010, 2011, maybe. Um, that was that was when the Sedins were there were lights out. Um, 
But uh, but yeah, you know, it, was, it was a tough call. Who did you grow up rooting for? Uh, actually, the Boston Bruins. Really? Where I lived, I was Ontario. Kind but of you were like in the middle of like in between Ottawa. Montreal and and, yeah. and Toronto, and you just got so sick of hearing about the Leafs <laughs> that yeah. it was like. And that was the only game that I ever saw. My dad took me to a game when I was young, and it was a Toronto game against Pittsburgh, and it was the only NHL game I ever saw before okay. I played in one. Really? Other than Hockey Night in Canada, you know, on mm -hmm. Saturday nights back home, and. You know, my dad would be watching it, and I was holding the rabbit ears in some area so he could see the game, so it would come in clear, <laughs> and you're looking around trying to see it. But, nah, it was always the Bruins. I was a Bobby Orr fan. I always uh, appreciated him. He was from, you know, kind of north of where I'm from, and you travel through there sometimes. You always see the sign. It was like, oh, yeah, Bobby Orr is the greatest, greatest yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, pregame rituals, whether it be on the ice or now to this day broadcasting? No, not not so much broadcasting. Uh, you know, when as a player, I always always loved being there early. I was always there hours. You know, sometimes before everybody else, and just kind of do your thing. But no, like I never had enough success offensively to go. Oh, okay, uh, superstition wise, yeah. okay, I got to do this again. You know, you do it. Yeah, you might score a goal one night. And okay, what did I do? What did I do? And you were trying yeah. to figure it out and do it again. <laughs> and obviously, it didn't work the next night. So you just kind of threw it out. But I don't know. I just kind of felt that it always kind of wasted a lot of energy. Fair enough. Thinking about it. or But some guys were off the charts, like just stupid things that they... So did you did you ever like watch film on like other fighters? Would you we didn't have that? that then. Like no... You know, what you, you know what you did? You know your game notes? I don't know if you guys have them before a game. Yeah. yeah. It's got everything in it for the team you're playing, about every player and all that kind of thing. That's all you would have. And so you always found yourself, because it was such a turnover in guys that played that role it seemed like that you would be sitting there and you'd going through it and you'd see who had a lot of penalty minutes you're going anybody know this guy anybody know this guy oh he's a righty oh Sounds he's a like lefty Archie. he likes yeah, this he yeah. does this and that's how you got your information yeah you know it was it, there was no way of of looking it up it was no way of uh you know kind of breaking down a guy yeah it was there was just nothing it you was you're going, going in, in unless you actually saw him before yeah uh or somebody has actually fought the person before that they could give you a little insight but other than that it was you're kind of freewheeling every time you went in yeah that's a that's a crazy way to do it um we're gonna take a ba uh, break we'll be right back All right, welcome back. Uh, we have Razor here, um, you know, just talking shop a little bit. Uh, gonna kind of change directions a little bit. I mean, listen, I don't know. You don't. I don't know if you look like a golfer, but what's what's your golf game like? My golf game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a two handicap. Really? What? Yeah. Really? Wow. Physical and mental. <laughs> no, I'm awful golfer. <laughs> awful. My son loves to golf now, and I'm just. I'm terrible. Yeah? I'm terrible. What, um, what's the like worst you part over of your game? You shooting over hundreds? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And lose balls like it's going out of style. <laughs> just put one down again and hit yeah, it. Yeah, just keep whacking, yeah. you know, because I, I haven't figured out it's not how hard you hit it. It's yeah. kind of where you hit yeah. it, setting yourself up, and I try to overpower it. Yeah. Just trying to, whatever, show like off. Me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. Not not so good. No. I, mean, I would be a hundred easy. <laughs> anytime, anytime you see, you know, whoever you're golfing with, just stripe one down the middle. You're like, oh, I'm gonna I can absolutely do that. laser this. I can thing. do it. Yeah. And then I just like playing golf tournaments, like scrambles and that. I hate it because everybody out there thinks they're professional golfers, and it's yeah. like, just hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, anybody that goes up and they stand there and they're yeah, that's great. Oh, this guy, I got a 60 second thing. warm up. Like, they'll stand Step there for back, shut up and hit the, the ball. ball. Just yeah. get the freaking thing. <laughs> they'll have 30 uh, practice swings just to duff it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I know. <laughs> or you get to your ball in the fairway and you walk up and whack it. Well, you weren't supposed to go because you're, this one's behind. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready golf. Yeah, I don't want to think about Keep it too up. much. Um, how does your body feel now? Um, obviously, I struggle to get out of bed sometimes i'm only 31 years old and only i couldn't imagine only uh, and i couldn't imagine uh obviously your playing career and I, stuff like that how does it i think it's i, I don't know i'm 56 i'll be 56 in june and i i sometimes i sit there and okay is it just because you're getting older or is it from the game you know there's obviously things that you hurt during the game 
that, you know, come back and I've had my toes cut off and put back on with plates because, you know, you, you messed them up from the skates, uh, you know, surgeries over the years. Some of that stuff hurts, yeah. But I don't know. I've just found that stay active and you keep going that yeah. it just kind of doesn't catch up to you. I find sometimes, like a lot of time when you're on the road and you get lazy and, you know, there's nothing to do and you're, you're in the hotel room and bed, you know, three quarters of the time you're there, that's when it starts getting you. Yeah. But... Overall, not too bad. You know, I had, I had to deal with a little issue when I was first done because my eyes, from being hit over the years, my eyes weren't tracking right. Mm -hmm. So it, all, it was almost like it was concussion or something. But I went to this guy in, in Pittsburgh, and he, and he got your eyes tracking right again. So it went from being tunnel vision to seeing everything again. So once that was kind of cleared up, it was... I've been fine. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I mentally maybe a little screwed up. But. Yeah. Yeah. You and I both. Um, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you mentioned traveling a lot. What was the, what was your favorite city to travel to? Oh man. We used to love going to Canadian cities. You know, when you played it's, you know, Vancouver is always really mm -hmm. a good spot. Calgary was great. Um, you know, when Florida first came into the league, it was like, yeah, this is nice. Yeah. And you know, yeah. this, is, this is, this is the place to be, but um. You know, it was it was a lot of fun going to cities a lot of times, but you never stayed in places long enough to really yeah. get a good feel for it. The odd time when you go on the Western Road Trips, you may stay a couple of days in a city, and that's it. But, you know, for anywhere on this side, like Pittsburgh, Boston, Philly, any of those kind of places, you're just in and out, and there's you don't really see much of it anyway. So, but, uh, you know, it, it was always fun to go to Montreal, just because of Montreal to play in the forum, go to Toronto to play in Maple Leaf Gardens, right. you know, Boston just to play in the gardens, and... Yeah. Those are the things that kind of stand out from all the cities, the buildings you got to play in, all the old school buildings that were so cool to be at. Chicago's another one. Yeah. You, so. you've, uh, you've played with uh, so many talented players throughout your career. Uh, we were just curious about uh, Dominic Hasek. How was uh, that playing with uh, him? It was an experience. <laughs> uh, We've all seen the videos, man. <laughs> yeah, no, the yeah. you haven't seen the videos away from the rink, and that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the ones that kind of make Dom – unique yeah. and the way he was um but you know, just the way he was as a person uh, off the ice we kind of kind of looked the other way sometimes and I mean, because he knew what he was going to play yeah and he and what he did on the ice and how he meant so much to you but i'll tell you what he was such a competitor that he would keep you on the ice after practice if he wasn't happy with his performance yeah he would be like and he'd pick guys like myself that wouldn't tell him no. And he'd be like, keep shooting. We're shooting. You could be out there for an hour after practice taking shots and doing whatever he wanted to work on. And he'd, and he'd lay there sometimes and, you know, you'd wait 10 minutes before you could take a shot because he's laying there trying to adjust to see where, if his foot was in this position, <laughs> what it would cover, his glove stick. So, but he was such a, just a master and, and he put so much into it that, you know, you, you just respect the heck out of him for what he did and for the size he was at the time. You know, I can remember we played, what, New Jersey, and it was got over at 10 to 2 in the morning, and it was like seven periods or whatever it may be, and said to him after the game, like, how'd you feel after all that? And he goes, I might have had one or two more periods in me, and then I would have been in trouble. You know, it's kind of <laughs> it just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, just freak, a freak uh, of nature, and not a guy that worked out a lot or anything like that. It was just more technique and mental for this guy. Yeah, no, that's... I mean, I feel like we know a couple guys like that. You know, Vino, Vino is very, very similar. He's very dialed, very focused, very, like, does a ton of film. Um, you know, the angles in, what, in which he plays is, uh, is really cool um, to see how he, he kind of thinks about it. Just, like, little movements where he, like, he's like, I'll be here. And even when we practice and we play against him, he'll do the craziest things, and he'll just try it out on us, and he'll just, like, stand sideways in the net and then last second change, like, He'll do a bunch of different well, things. Well, Dom is the same way. Like in practice, he'd come up during practice and say, you know, if you took the shot from right this spot right here, it's hard for me to stop. Yeah. And, you know, and, and <laughs> so he's telling you, you know, yeah. things that nobody would ever think about. Right. Yeah. Even being an offensive player, you'd never think about that. And yeah. he would be pointing out things because he knew what was difficult for him or any mm -hmm. other goaltender, you know, how you shot it, where you shot it from. 
Uh, so it, that helped out a lot as well. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool. V does very similar things. He's helped me a lot yeah. um, with with shooting and different things. So it's well, it's nice also like to go off that like you're shooting on the best goalie. Yeah, and it's gonna only help your game too. To yeah, but thing, I owned so. him in practice. That's yeah, why so. I pissed all the time. <laughs> That's why you lasted. As long and you as know you what? Did. I never <laughs> I never realized it. And my son came down one time last summer. He goes. Dad, you scored on Dom Hasher? I go, yeah, in practice all the time. He goes, no. When he was in Chicago, I scored a goal on him. Oh, really? And I'm like, I wish I had known that when, yeah. or remembered it, that yeah. when we played, I would never let him da live that down. But, yeah, it was pretty cool. Nice. Um, we've got another kind of little fun thing here. Uh, and we've been going back and forth on how we want to do this. But um, if you had to pick your uh, top five starting lineup all time, all time, who would it be? Oh my gosh, goalie, you know, two D. I guess that's six. Yeah, pretty hard not to say Hashik and Net. Um, probably Bobby Orr and maybe Paul Coffey on the backside. Yeah, uh, you know, Gretzky Lemieux up front with probably I don't know Rocker Richard or somebody. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and to kind of go off all that stuff, those are such talented yeah, players. Yeah, that'd be We only watched scene. a little bit of that. We were a little bit younger then, but. Um, your biggest wow, um, not on the Sabres, um, players you like to watch now? Uh, just one player specifically that you, you've seen and you're just like, wow, this player. Uh, a different level. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, Connor McDavid holds that title right now. Yeah, um, I, I watched the Edmonton game just uh, the, the other speed, day. Just the speed. It seems like every time you touch the buck, something's going to happen. Yeah, and, and, yeah. The, and the speed he has from just stop to 100%. It's just in like split seconds, not seconds, split seconds. And just the, the level that he can play the game at at a high pace, it's just very few guys out there. Some guys are fast, but their brain is about a foot or two behind where their feet are, so yeah. they're not thinking the same way he is. Yeah. But at a high pace, this guy is just unbelievable. It's, what do you – sorry, go ahead. Uh, you can go on. I was just going to you know, pump up McDavid's tires a little bit more. Uh, I was going to move on and ask uh, something about Rempe. Uh, oh, love uh, it. What do you, yeah, what do you think yeah. about that? You know what? I think it's great for the game. You know, the kid come in with a lot of enthusiasm, got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. You know, he's suspended right now. <laughs> yeah, what, four games? Or yeah, like that. such a junior. <laughs> but, but the, you know, that, and you know what? That's it because it's of his size, lot. too. He's coming massive. in and hitting somebody. He's massive. But I think our game and your game, it, it's an entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's an entertainment business. And yeah. I think we get away from that a lot because they put so much emphasis on winning and losing so much. And, you know, high-skilled guys, you know, there's so many of them now that you get away from that side of it. And there's nobody out there, they say, oh, certain areas people don't like. the fight. Tell me, I don't care if you're in San Jose, Florida, Detroit, Buffalo, Toronto. There's a fight. Every person in the building's on their feet. Oh, yeah. And every person, in the, they're excited, whether for whomever they're cheering for. And the attention this kid drew in a short period of time like that weekend when they were playing before they played Toronto and he was going to end up fighting Reeves, you know, I'm at the rink with my kid and I got fathers at the rink going, I got to go home and see the game. I'm like, well, we don't play tonight. So they're like, <laughs> yeah. no, I got to see the Toronto Ranger game because there's going to be a fight. Yeah. And, you know, just from that attention, I think that sometimes that entertainment value that it brings is overlooked sometimes because of the new way people think out right. there. Yeah. You know, you can't. It's not a part of thing. Well, it is a part of things. It's been there for a hundred years, yeah. and, and and a majority of the people that watch the game love it. Yeah. So and, and even the players themselves, they're all talking about it as well. Oh yeah. What, what was crazy is like I, he went on a run where he was just fighting everyone. I think it might have been the Toronto game, it like, but it was he, before that. But, but like, like three man, in a row. but if yeah, you look at him, row, he's yeah. got two black he eyes going into the game. Yeah, Nick Delory, I think was his first fight, and then a guy from Columbus and. You know, he, he was doing okay. And even with Ryan Reeves, Ryan's probably one of the, the guys out there right now that is so-called heavyweight guy yeah. in the in the game. He did great with him. I like, and he I did like fine. the so-called, like you would. You <laughs> well, it's different now. Those run. guys back yeah. then. Yeah. They're soft now, huh? <laughs> and I'm not saying it was just, it was just different then, yeah. you know. No, there. Back know. then, guys, when you fought, you know, they'd, they'd gouge your eyes out. They'd bite you. They'd yeah. do whatever. They, yeah. It was just different. Now it's like they fight now and – you know, they're patting each other on the back and hugging and, okay, let's go get her five minutes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> there's still a big – there's still a somewhere forward in the game, and the NHL understands that that's why they'll never officially take it out of the game yeah. because they know there is a factor. Like, But the problem being is 
kids coming up now in junior they're eliminating it you f- no fighting in the uh, quebec league anymore ontario and western league i think it's two or three fights you're suspended so kids aren't doing it so yeah. they're not learning that craft they're not understanding when when not to do it or how to do it and coaches yeah. definitely don't coach that way anymore yeah no, that we ain't. used to we, we used to start games myself and barnaby and may and bugner and whoever else we had and they'd say get it going <laughs> get it going we'd go out the first shift or two and just fire it up and then you know, they get the building going, get people into it, I and then, that. you know, step back and let, you know, the stars take over. Yeah, no, big time. Um, well, yeah, that's, uh, we're, we're out of time. Uh, you know, that's all we've got today for, for the podcast. Just wanted to thank you for coming on, man. It's been, no problem. It's been a Great lot of job. fun. Great job. Great yeah. story. It's, yeah. uh, it's been exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make me well, want to fight by any means. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't. No, but, uh, You're so no. skinny. I don't think <laughs> yeah. you should. Right? That. Thank you. You got a little hey. beef up the upper body <laughs> yeah. a little bit there, okay? That's why I asked if your parents uh, got mad at you for fighting because I, I feel like my parents... No, my parents were upset. all happy. As long as I left home when I was 15. They stopped having to pay for me and feed me. So yeah, fair. as longer I stayed away, the better it was for them. I yeah. mean, listen, the, the more milk that you drink, you know, the maybe you put a little bit more muscle on. Yeah, um, not wrong. But uh, especially thanks you know to our sponsor milk for health um you know trying to get dana a little bit bigger here uh you know obviously before you guys go wherever you guys watch your podcast or listen to your podcast whether that's youtube spotify apple music make sure to, to like subscribe and uh stay tuned for the next one Thanks.